Preparation through education is less costly than learning through tragedy. We have to go back in time. It's May 2018, and the next set of the year is about to drop, that being flames of destruction. Now besides the meta-defining infinite impermanence that would change the game, many sets or many cards were going to be released in the set that would change the game, from generic link monsters that offered effects to very powerful monsters that would offer floodgate effects. But it would be an archetype and a monster, a part of that archetype, that would warp the game for the foreseeable future and offer one of the most oppressive times of the Link format. This being the aforementioned Nightmare Mermaid. Now, deceivingly simple, this Link 1 monster would take another Nightmare monster to control as its Link material. However, it wasn't necessarily in what it didn't do. It's what it was going to be able to do. So I'll start off by reading the effect. If this card is Link Summoned, you can discard one card. Special summon one Nightmare Monster from your deck. Then, if this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. You can only use this effect of Nightmare Mermaid once per turn. Monsters on the field lose 1000 attack slash defense unless they are co-linked. Now, Nightmare Mermaid alone, after ring that effect, is a tutor from the deck. And usually when tutor from the decks happen, unless they're heavily restricted, there is not a weakness to them. And in the case of Nightmare Mermaid, it brought out the very powerful Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, which everybody, I would assume, has been acquainted with since the last couple formats. However, Mermaid was just the start of the problem, that once it arrived to the field and summoned out the Ibli, it was time to begin the very painful part of the game, which was starting the building of the U-Link. Now, for those of you who do not know the U-Link or haven't seen U-Links in modern day, U-Links or Extra Links were very oppressive and because of the Nightmare Monsters, this was viable with certain decks, particularly with Goki, a deck that I played, as this strategy was able to turbo through and amass enough monsters to actually complete the full U-Link from your board. So for those wondering what the U-Link is, the U-Link is actually creating an extra link solely based on your monsters. However, without connecting arrows to the other side to allow your opponent the ability to play the game by not being able to summon link monsters. As under link format, if you weren't able to have a link zone to summon to, extra deck monsters were impossible. And in the case of Nightmare Mermaid, this made the lock available because after you would link off the Ibli, the Ibli would now turn itself onto the opponent's field and without a zone to link off to now the monsters were not going to be able to clear themselves so Ibli would be stuck very few decks actually had an out to this unless they were actually able to tribute off Ibli but then they still ran the problem of being able to clear out the link zones as there weren't very many un extra deck based decks at the time in the case of the nightmare you link this was very powerful as on the video above you can see what Goki or warriors, I guess, Gokis were capable of at the full power. As by having this entire U-Link established, Phoenix and Cerberus would protect from battle destruction as well as card destruction. And with the ability to have this completely sealed off, your opponent was now in a heap of trouble. And ultimately, it came down to being simple as you just got locked. And it made the game very, very difficult. As essentially it was now being up to a dice roll of whoever went first would be able to pop off. As although hand traps did exist at this time, there was nothing big enough to really slow down the opponent. As they could just continue to play as long as they had additional extenders. Now in order to remedy this, Konami decided that it was best to just ban other stuff. As unfortunately, they still had other plans for Nightmare Mermaid. And the Nightmare archetype itself still needed to exist as it was supposed to be the generic um, answer so that people can continue to play in link format without the need of XCs and synchros. So our toolbox of links had to continue to exist. So other stuff was banned around Mermaid in order to keep it alive. That being something like Nightmare Goblin and some of the other cards that would make it more powerful. However, as we know always, time continues to move on. 
and the reason that they were kept around would finally show itself. As we arrive to October 2018. Now October 2018 is an interesting time as we were about to receive the next core set of the year being Soul Fusion. Now Soul Fusion was a very different set than I would say um, most cards as this was going to release a very interesting set of archetypes and a new I would say time for the card game because new new cards were always going to be released but a new push was going to be added to the uh, metagame. And from this, we would see the rise of a new art type that would go on to be one of the best art types of, I guess, the next couple of years. And in Soul Fusion, besides the aforementioned Thunder Dragons that would finally debut in the TCG, we would finally see another art type that sit, sat in the shadows waiting to appear. As although being mostly super rares and commons to rares, this set was actually hiding one of its most powerful archetypes. And from some, this would actually see play immediately off the first YCS, but in a different way altogether. As the Orcus archetype's debut was very interesting, as until um, a few months after there or a few months after Soul Fusion's release here in the TCG, Orcus was not looking to be a very top tier deck as although it did have a very compact engine it didn't really seem to have any direction going forward as most of its cards that it had didn't necessarily do anything immediately as without another wave of support orcus seemed to be just a simple deck that could tutor out monsters and build into something really powerful however this didn't stop it from seeing play at first i would be unfortunately um you know missed if i didn't mention its first actual appearance as a secondary engine for a going second build of a deck that actually was starting to appear at this time being you know boral sword otk as many people would actually tech in the orcus cards as it allowed them to essentially give a powered up boral sword more power to swing as this was a very good engine to go along with it but the reason I had to bring this up is that this would be one of the few iterations of Orcus that didn't center around the main support we were about to receive. And essentially, Orcus would never look any different um, going forward after this time. As, unfortunately, the deck would focus around most of its monsters with Orcus Nightmare dumping the card that started all of its combos. And arguably the most important card in the Orcus strategy being Orcus Harp Horror. As since monsters come in all shapes and sizes, this one was the most important as very much it was the tutor from the deck that the Orcus deck required. And its effects read as follows. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Special summon one Orcus monster from your deck except Orcus Harpoor. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except dark monsters. You can only use this effect of Orcus Harpoor once per turn. Now, that immediately shows how powerful this card is. However, you have to keep in mind that Orcus was an incomplete art type, but that would all change with the release of Dark Neostorm. As Dark Neostorm would un basic basically unravel the remaining cards of the Orcus archetype. And since I played this deck at that time, I remember the moment they released and showed the support, being that of Dingirsu and even Crescendo. This deck was made insane, as it now gave it the ability to now deal with all threats and bring it to the meta contenders. Now, if you guys are wondering, why on earth would this mean that Mermaid still existed? Now, Mermaid itself was a card that had basically saw almost zero play, based solely on the fact that most decks weren't able to utilize uh, it in conjunction with Ibli. However... With the, with the creation of Orcus and the introduction of the rest of the archetype, it now made sense to go into Mermaid to start your combo. As by going into Mermaid, you can now bring out, instead of Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, you could bring out Orcus Nightmare in order to basically start your combo. As once you summon it out and link them off into whatever the link to was, would be, arguably it would be Galatea. You now had your Harp Horror ready to go, and Harp Horror would banish itself. You could summon <clears throat> either Brass or even Skeleton. The point was you'd probably summon Skeleton for its, you know, revive. But the point is, you now had a way to access your deck. 
And with Galatea's effect to shuffle in the banished Orcus monsters to now, you know, set spells and traps, you now had an effective way to get to your counter trap. And or night or nightmare mermaid was the way to do it. However, this also made another problem, as as you can read before, if you can make two monsters, you've got mermaid. Now, this meant if you could make two monsters, you now had Orcus combo. And that meant full combo. So this arguably made it too broken. Made the deck consistent, but also too splash splashable. As if you look at deck lists from this time period, you can even see people taking in small Orcus packages just so they can get access to Crescendo. And it would make their decks that much more strong. As many hybrid decks at the time existed solely based on the fact that two monsters got into this massive combo on top of anything else your deck could spit out. So, unfortunately, this had to be checked. And in October of 2019, this was finally done. As on October, as the October 14, 2019 ban list had Nightmare Mermaid banned in the TCG. And, as you know, it still sits there today. However... This did not mean the end of Orcus as a whole, and the deck was absolutely still good, and was still playable. As since the loss of Mermaid, the deck still just had to change around, as if you were able to simply acquire two monsters and or any way to get Harpoor to the grave, you now had access to full combo, although slightly weaker, the Orcus deck was still playable. And... Because the rest of the support still existed, there was no reason to not play the deck. It just meant that it had to be contained either in itself or dedicated to getting out this combo. As cards like Mathematician, Armageddon Knight, Dark Greffer, cards to simply get other cards to the grave became very important as they were now the best way to set up your combos and establish this variant. And I think after this period going forward, we would end up in what would be the Toss format. As the other decks of the time were still very powerful, and although slightly nerfed to some degree in some aspects, this was still, you know, a very powerful time. As Toss was very prominent for the fact that Thunder Dragons, Orcus, Sky Strikers, and Salamon Grades were the decks of this time period, and this would actually last for about a year plus. However, though, nothing ever lasts forever, and in, especially in card games, the good times can't last and on January 2020, we would receive the massive ban list that ended the toss format and would see the banning of Orcus Tarp Horror. As many other cards would be banned in this list, I will have to get to them in different videos. But specifically for Harp Horror, this was the end of it. And unfortunately, its timing was very unique. But we can only say it was goodbye. As we would finally look at both Harpoor and Mermaid being banned. Now for those wondering, the story of Harpoor and Mermaid is actually a good one of showing how it happens when Konami is actually forward focused on you know progressing the game. As we can actually see the evolution of Links becoming generic so that Mermaid's existence was meant to get the decks rolling and give them a way to kind of get Links to combat you know the other meta threats. But also the problem when you try to overbalance cards by I mean, overcompensate for an, a mechanic by giving it way too many broken cards. It could just punish the game and make it not fun. And in the case of Harpoor, it shows what happens when a deck that was just too powerful and too splashable eventually needs to find a way to be balanced. And in the case of Harpoor, its banning was more designed in order to stop people from using Orcus as a generic engine and more so for their abilities to stay somewhat pure but without slamming a bunch of their cards. As both of them represent a period of Yu-Gi-Oh of basically being too many broken tutors without any restrictions. As when you look at Mermaid, its restriction was really poor as it didn't really change what, what it could do. And in Harpoor's case, it was very powerful, as that if you just found a way to get it to the grave, it was strong. And in the case of both Orcus Heart Horror and Nightmare Mermaid, their death were by their own design. Now, this is Brad from the Ed Army signing off. And for all of you out there to sign on.